This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by Netflix. Time to get our HD Nation on. Jonathan Wright saying, I'm thinking about taking the 3D plunge this summer or fall, and I'm wondering which tech do you prefer now and looking forward into the future? Active shutter or passive 3D? My primary use would be for movies and 3D gaming. Jonathan from Boston. I'm going to oh, come right out. I, I bet I can guess. I'm going to recommend active. Active shutter 3D technology, at least for the time being. Right. Uh, Every passive 3D TV I've seen so far decimates half the video picture. It destroys, loses. What? Half the video picture is gone when you're viewing 3D content. How do you lose half the video picture? Because of the filmed pattern retarder technology that's used in passive 3D systems. It essentially, is that it's splitting it. It's creating, a, in a sense, an interlaced system that right. sends half the data to one eye and half to the other. They would like to claim that that data is since being reconstructed in your brain into a right. full resolution picture. I find that hardly... They're, they're literally that's, giving that's you tenuous. a line <laughs> of the picture, a line of black, a line of the picture, a line of black, and If you look and through either eye, flipping. that's how it looks. Okay. And at certain distances, especially the closer you get, uh, it ends up, you will see that black line interlaced type picture. Right. And if you're viewing the 3D picture with the passive technology from even relatively small off-axis angles up or down, you'll immediately see an unacceptable uh, level of crosstalk, essentially right. double images on whatever you see. Also, uh, the passive 3D screens appear to be employing low-pass filter on all incoming video signals, 2D and 3D. Basically, they're doing this to prevent vertical judder, uh, which is a slight shaking of the image. This also, uh, in a sense, uh, the low-pass filter is essentially eliminating all your high-frequency data, which is all your fine detail in the picture. Uh, and how they get that back? Well. They're essentially increasing the sharpness setting on the TV to reconstitute data that they had to get rid of. It's annoying. Anyway, I eventually see uh, the active glasses technology being introduced into the screen itself. Much the way, in a sense, that we see 3D imagery in the movie theater, where they put a system in front of the, the projector to then put through and then polarize it left and right really quickly. That would allow us then to have passive glasses, but the active system built into the 3D TV. Then we could have full resolution to both eyes, the way it should be, with you know, inexpensive 3D glasses. And I, I totally understand that the desire for inexpensive 3D glasses, especially if you want to have a room full of people all watching the screen, and the active glasses right now at least, well, the other, another annoying thing I've noticed about the active systems is that, well, even compared to last year, some of the new glasses for the 2011 TVs aren't compatible with the 2010 TVs, and that in and of itself is a little annoying, to say the least. So, in a sense, I, I'm a fan of active technology because you get the full picture, full resolution, without any trickery involved. And yes, the glasses are more expensive right now, but you're, you're still playing beta tester, folks, and this stuff will change in the future. And I, I'm hoping that, that that put the active system in the, in the TV and then allow you to have inexpensive passive glasses, I think that will be, we'll see that at CES, I'm almost certain, for 2012. Barring all of a sudden, like, the blackouts being lifted from baseball and, and baseball and NFL and everybody in the planet going 3D, plus, say, Michael Bay in Transformers 3, do you think 3D's dead? Or, or do you think 3D, I mean, do, do you really think 3, 3D has a future at this point? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. It ain't going anywhere. Uh, and it's getting better with every, every generation of content that they're creating. The TV stuff, another reason, uh, another reason I'm not the biggest fan of the passive technology is that with broadcast 3D currently, that's already half resolution. So then by the time you run it through a passive system, you've cut that resolution in half again, and mm -hmm. that creates an even softer looking picture. Also, with 3D, especially in particular to gaming, one thing I really dig is that you could have both you and your friend wearing a pair of glasses and seeing separate pictures. So rather than doing the traditional split screen or quad screen for the people gaming in the room, I think you could only probably do this with two people at once, but you could then have each of you watching a separate image, or perhaps if you have uh, somehow audio being separate as well, you could also have you and your companion watching different programming at the same time. And I, I think that's a kind of a neat thing to, one aspect of 3D that is different from just the straight 3D part of it. So you're still buying them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Phil writes in, is it worth the extra money to go from 720p to 1080p in the 42 inch screen size? Is it worth it or will I not even notice a difference from 15 feet or so? I'll be from the TV while lying in bed. Phil in Lincoln, Nebraska. 
Uh, at 15 feet, I suggest that picture contrast and color saturation are more important mm -hmm. than doubling the screen resolution from 720p to 1080p. 720p is about a million pixels, 1080p right. is about two million. At 10 feet, I would definitely want a 1080p screen. And if you do opt for that 720p screen, make sure it's capable of displaying a video picture without overscan. This is common, this is a common feature with 1080p screens, but I find it less so with the 720p screens. Although I haven't looked at a 720p TV in a while, so <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they've caught up a little bit there. Yeah. And if you're going to go half resolution, you should at least, uh, basically the reason I want overscan it eliminated so that if you're going to go that half resolution route, then every pixel that's possible coming from the video source right. will be on the screen. There you have it. Yeah. Blu-ray? Let's do it. <laughs> hey, it's now time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of July 5th, 2011. First up, Gettysburg. <laughs> and Gods and Generals, limited collector's edition. The director's cut of Gettysburg comes in the original 185 to 1 aspect ratio, and Gods and Generals extended director's cut is displayed in the original 239 to 1, and both include a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack. The box set is packaged to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Civil War, and includes two Blu-ray discs, two DVDs, a ton of featurettes, a photo book of Civil War artifacts, a 32-page excerpt from Time's upcoming book, the Civil War, an Illustrated History, and more. Next up, Hobo with a Shotgun, starring Rutger Hauer as yeah. the title character. This film is the second of fake trailers from Grindhouse to be made into feature-length film. And compared to the first, Machete, this one really ups the cheese and gratuitous violence factor, and I mean that in the best possible way. This release comes with a digital copy and is presented in a 239 to 1 aspect ratio. Special features include two commentary tracks, deleted scenes, an alternate ending, the original contest winning trailer, TV spots, video blogs, a making of featurette, and something called behind the scenes interactive shotgun film mode. Mm -hmm. Also released this week, Das Boot, director's cut, adapted from the 1973 German novel. This 1981 film tells the fictional story of a German World War II submarine and its crew. Roger was a fan of this film partly because of how well it depicts both the mundane life and the terrifying war aspects, all from a point of view you don't normally see in World War II films. This release is digitally restored with fully Ooh. remastered and features the 208 minute director's cut. Yes. It comes in an MPEG 4 ABC codec, 185 to 1 aspect ratio, with both an English and a German DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack. This film is originally in German, but since they had bilingual actors, each actor recorded his own dialogue for the English dub. Extras include a director's commentary, behind the scenes, featurettes, historical material, and more. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. Hey, you know we love HD in the living room, and that's why we love our next sponsor, Netflix. Netflix, people, they got more than 23 million members, including me, Robert, Veronica, Roger, Serafina, just about everybody we know. We're talking Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies over the internet right to your favorite screen, all for one low monthly price. If you're a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movie titles on your computer or your TV through the Xbox 360, the PS3, the Nintendo Wii, the Roku box, and many, many more. Netflix lets you find the movies and shows you want to watch easily. Plus, you watch as many titles as you want anytime for one low monthly price. And you can cancel anytime. No big surprise bills and no long-term commitment. What are you waiting for? Get your free trial membership. Go to Netflix.com slash Techzilla and sign up now. And be sure to use this URL so they know we sent you.